Okay, let's talk about current for a second. This idea that uh, different devices are going to use different amounts of current. And let's see if we can come up with some typical numbers here for different items, how much current they're going to use. So let's say I have a, an LED, right? If I turn on just a little red LED, green LED, how much current does it draw? Any ideas? And we're talking about in the scale of amps, right? That's our SI unit. Well, it turns out a LED draws somewhere around 10 milliamps. Okay, there's kind of a wide scale, but this is a typical number there for an LED, 10 milliamps. What about your smartphone? Okay, when you're walking around with your smartphone, how much power does it draw? Let's say you're not even talking on the phone right now, it's just doing its normal thing, talking to the cellular towers, doing some internal processing. A smartphone is about 100 milliamps. Now that should make sense to you because we just talked about a AA battery, right? A AA battery running 100 milliamps will last about 10 hours. Your smartphone doing its normal thing will last the full day, right? 10 hours or two batteries in there, 20 hours, okay? What about a light bulb? Let's say you go to Home Depot in the past because you can't buy a 100 watt light bulb anymore, but let's say you go to Home Depot, right? And you buy a 100 watt light bulb, the incandescent light bulb, not the new compact fluorescence, not the new LED. You buy a normal 100 watt light bulb. How much current does that draw? It's about one amp. Okay, so we've gone up by an order of 10 each time, right? I got 10 milliamps. 100 milliamps, 1,000 milliamps, which is one amp. What about your hair dryer? Okay, when you fire up your hair dryer, how much current does it draw? Well, we talked about the power of the hair dryer, right? And when you turn on your hair dryer, you can actually see the lights dim in your house a little bit. So it seems like it's gotta be considerably more than a light bulb, and in fact it is, it's on the order of 10 amps. Okay. So look, we've already gone four orders of magnitude here up to a hair dryer. What about the total current that's available coming into your house, right? There's a big power line on the telephone pole, there's a big metal wire that comes down to your house and there is some amount of current that is available to your house, and that's it. If you draw more than that, the electricity company is gonna have a problem with you. So how much is that total house current available? Well, it's basically another factor of 10, 100 amps, okay? When you go out in the morning and you start your car, there's a 12 volt battery in there and there's cables that are connected to the starter motor in your car. And when you turn the ignition, what happens is it powers up the starter motor. That starter motor pushes against a gear that attaches to your engine and that electric motor actually spins your whole engine for a little bit until the engine starts firing and the gas takes over, okay? And then the thing retracts and then the electric motor just sits there idle until you need to start the car again. But during that start, the battery has to provide a lot of current. Okay, And you know this, right? Because if you're sitting there holding the key and your car's not starting, you can only do that for a few minutes before your battery just drains doesn't work anymore, right? So you're hoping, you're crossing your fingers, come on, start on this one, I know this is gonna be it. And then you're trying to decide, should I push real hard on the accelerator, should I not? You know, this whole science of flooding the engine or not. How much current is available during the start of your car? 
is it really more than your whole house current? It is. It's like 300 amps. Okay. They call this the cold cranking power of your battery. And it can be hundreds of amps. How do you know this? Well, when you look at your car battery, those cables that are attaching from the terminals of the battery down to the starter motor, those are big, heavy, thick cables. They need to be carrying a lot of current, a lot of electrons per second to get that car to start. Okay, so that can be like 300 amps. All right, let's get to something really big. Lightning strike. Okay. A lightning strike is when there's a big voltage difference between the cloud and the ground, so much so that the electric field strips the electrons off of the molecules that are floating around in the air, all the nitrogen, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and it creates this huge amount of current, and that's what we see as a lightning strike, and that can be 100,000 amps up to a million amps, okay? 10 to the five to 10 to the six amps. All right, so this is the sort of scale of things that you're talking about. We've got, you know, eight orders of magnitude here, it's interesting thinking about stuff like LEDs, right? How little current they draw compared to things like your hair dryer. And this is why there's this big push for LED lighting, okay? Because LED lights just draw a lot less current and still produce the same amount of light. A 100 watt light bulb, an incandescent light bulb, is not very good at converting electric power into optical power, whereas something like an LED is much more efficient at converting electrical power into optical power. And so now you should all be buying LED bulbs. When you go to Home Depot, right, buy the LED bulb and it'll say, oh, it's a 75 watt equivalent and it only uses seven watts, something like that, okay? It's like 10 times as efficient as an incandescent light bulb. All right, when you think about types of current, you also need to think about, is it DC or is it AC? 